When are you going to switch over to solar? Uh, Doug and Luke approached me. They're the, the owner and co-founder of, uh, of Legacy. They approached me uh, 2015. I made the transition. I sold my first deal in solar September 1st, 2015. And I was hooked. Um, That's never, right when I got into solar. Yeah, I, I sold my first yeah. horse. That's did, awesome. Where did you sell September. it? Did you sell it in Utah. South Carolina? Okay, I sold mine in Columbia, South mine Carolina. In Utah. Yeah. That I, is I so didn't know funny. anything about solar. I didn't know anything. All I knew is that I was sitting down next to somebody in a room, kind of like we're in, and I'm like, dude, I worked my butt off for this amount of money, and he seemed very happy and made twice as much as me. And I'm like, I want that life. What's up, guys? This is Sam Taggart with the DDD Podcast, and I am here in Orlando, Florida, with the one and only Jory Sullivan. He is an all-time hero in the door-to-door -door space, and if you do not know who Jory is, you better start going and following him. He is a true OG door knocker, never like a, ooh, I take leads in solar kind of guy. He's generated over 400 self-generated solar deals. He's managed over 65 megawatts, hundreds of sales reps. He's the number two division um, in all of Legacy. He has um, you know, millions and millions of dollars a month in revenue and just a juggernaut in leadership, sales, all of the above. He yeah. owns multiple franchises, joint chiropractic to a gym. He's done, I mean, the man is the, 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 the man, the myth, the legend. So he's speaking at Door to Door Con. What do you think about all the people coming to Door to Door Con? Come see your workshop. Um, I, I, I'm, I hope you guys come and check out my workshop. The workshop, I'd be blessed for you guys to do that. Um, but just door to door con itself is a phenomenal. Like when I got, like, I want to start out by saying I was terrible when I started door to door. I didn't know anything about door to door. I was terrible. And the fact that something like door to door con exists would have helped me propel faster to my goal. So, Sam, I want to give you a big shout out for creating a system and a program that people that want to get in the space can win, win fast, and win often. Love that, love so, that. Yeah. Um, so guys, I, I, I'm honored and it's, he's taken his time out of his day to come and interview with me and it's a pleasure. So let's dive into it. So you got into door to door win, what year? Uh, I met, I met uh, Brandon on a train. Brandon Holmes? Uh, Schaumburg, no, Brandon Schaumburg. Schaumburg. Did not do well in door to door. I met him on a train. I, my train was 25 See, Brian minutes. Chambers? I don't know. I don't Related? know. Yeah, okay. I worked for Apex in 2007. Um, my train was 20 minutes late. I was 15 minutes late. Um, I made the train, and I stopped in a city called Salt Lake City, Utah. A young man sat down next to me because he said I looked friendly because I could not afford a plane ticket to go to college. And uh, we rode for two days together to, to Iowa for college. And... Uh, he told me I could make $10,000 in one summer, and um, I was hooked from there, and, and uh, I ended up making 19000 2008 summer. That was but, my first summer. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So, it wasn't very good in the space. It was but 19000 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> so, for everybody that just came home from the summer, and they made their first twenty grand or their first fifteen grand, let's say there's hope, because he's made more than that since. <laughs> so, yeah. So, you went and did alarms yeah. for many years. When did you get to switch over to solar? Uh... Doug and Luke approached me. They're the, the owner and co-founder of, uh, of Legacy. They approached me uh, 2015. I made the transition. I sold my first deal in solar September 1st, 2015. And I was hooked. Um, That's right when I got into solar. Yeah, I, I sold my first yeah. horse. That's did, awesome. Where did you sell September. it? Did, did you sell it in Utah. South Carolina? Okay, I sold mine in Columbia, South mine Carolina. Was in Utah. Yeah. That I, is I so didn't know funny. anything about solar. I didn't know anything. All I knew is that I was sitting down next to somebody in a room, kind of like we're in, and I'm like, dude, I worked my butt off for this amount of money, and he seemed very happy and made twice as much as me, and I'm like, I want that life. And so I'm not pitching you to go sell solar, but um, that's what led me to packing up my, my bags, selling my home I just bought, my wife just had our baby, and jumping all in on solar, didn't know what a kilowatt was, didn't know what a pay scale was. All I knew is that uh, Doug said, 
Um, he said, I, I want to work with you, but we don't need you. Legacy is going to the moon without you. And I'm, and I'm the kind of person that says, like, you need me. You're going to need me. So Legacy back then, let's think of Legacy in 2015. Yeah. What did yeah. it look like? Uh, the reporting, it, let, like Legacy back then, 10, maybe 15 deals in a day was like top notch. I was next level when we hit 10 to 15. And now it's like, if we don't hit 100 in a day, we're just like, whoa, what's going on? So um, it, just, it just evolved. It's, I can't describe it. I, it's like I'm living in this dream. Sometimes it doesn't feel real of all the moving parts that are happening um, to, to win. So it's not about legacy. It's about, like, we're fighting, like, climate change. We're fighting big corporations. That's awesome. Yeah. So you crushed South Carolina. You were like the solar god, in my opinion, <laughs> out there. Everybody, because I did open up Cal or South Carolina, yeah, I and I came out there, and I was like, Jory, how's it out here? Yeah. And you're just like, we're crushing. Stay out of my turf. Yeah, I'm like, I'm yeah, coming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so anyway, you crushed it. Then you moved down to Florida. Yep. Um, crushed it here, because South Carolina had some law changes mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, now, back in South Carolina, you run yep. South Carolina. Yeah, Florida. Um, yep, I work with Florida, uh, Missouri, Dallas, Texas. Uh, North Carolina is a really good market for us, and and so, um, and a little bit of Georgia. So we're just doing whatever we can to to impact the people. So, we're gonna dive in on this podcast on some cultural stuff. So he has a formula of culture and running teams and retention and scaling, and I think that'll be a really interesting topic. But first, I want to ask some random questions. It's fine. You wake up one morning, or how, I, I still want to. I want to know this story because it's a great story. Which one? Which one? I'm talking. You wake up one morning, you're like I'm just gonna run, and keep running. Forrest Gump. Tell us the story of your 40 yeah. miles. No, it's 52. 52. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All David right, Goggins so, over here. So what are you doing? all right. So let me. I guess there's <laughs> there's one more recent. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I, oh, okay. So I have this like. I feel like I don't know. I'm a weirdo. I like pain, but like mental and physical pain. So it was my 32nd birthday, and. And I got up and I'm like, you know, we need a race of money for the National Suicide Prevention Line. And, and I, I told my wife, I said, hey, uh, I, let's, run a, let's run a 30K on a treadmill. <laughs> and, and so she's like, okay. So I just put on my sneakers and just started running. And you will never know this, but a treadmill has an automatic shutoff at three hours. So it was the longest 14 minutes to finish that 30K on a treadmill. But we raised like $900 for suicide prevention. So that was really cool. The suffering is worth it. Then I was able to go enjoy a nice dinner with my family on my birthday. Um, it was very sore. But, um, but what you're talking about is David Goggins, I think, came out in 2016 on a high level. And on 2017, before he had his book and became super famous, he talked about how he just he just woke up and wanted to run 100 miles, 24 hours to run this race. And so I'm like, if that guy can do it, I can. Well, I can't. I did 52 miles, and um, it was on a one-mile loop, just over and over and over, and it sucked, it hurt. Um, but I wanted to kind of see what I was made of because I believe, like, you, your brain and your body will adapt and continue to, like, just build, like, grittiness. Yeah. yeah. So how has that affected you pushing your limit of uncomfortability so i i just interviewed jim quick and he talks about you know he does the cold plunge out in the in the bay at new york and he you know he does things to help his mind stay sharp so like what have you seen this correlation of pushing your body just wake up and do a 30k or um you know some of the physical elements yeah how has that pushed and helped you in your business your personal life other yeah. ways so it allows me to be able to operate calm and chaos Right, because there's gonna be a lot of times that your mind wants you to stop. You don't want to do it. You're in pain. You're in painful, and as you're growing and scaling your business, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. And so, um, when chaos happens, you're able to operate at a higher level, higher frequency. And I think that's what separates me from a lot of people is I am okay with just getting in the trenches, living in the trenches, and not getting out of the trenches. Like I look at the way I look at solar or door to door even. I look at America was kind of founded in, 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 like in the way where our generals and our captains, they fought from the front. They led from the front. And I always think of the movie The Patriot where Mel Gibson takes the flag. We call and, this the William Wallace effect. Yeah, the William I Wallace effect. I literally yeah. have this in my training. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Right? And Let's so go. like when everyone's retreating, no. Right? We got to go. 
right? And that's the mentality. I believe that America is America today is because the generals of the British, right, they led from the back or led from the tents and it's not as effective. And so I know I need to stay in the business. I need to continue to sell. I need to continue to recruit, lead, train. Um, and I need to be able to suffer because I can't ask people to suffer if I'm not willing to suffer first. Love that. So let's, yeah, let's dive into culture because, you know, a big problem in, let's just say, solar or roofing or even just any sales is mm. how do you eliminate complacency? Mm, yeah, sales competitions, right? Um, I will do anything for a, a baseball hat. I will do anything. Like, <laughs> But how do you get somebody to no. buy into the damn yeah. baseball hat? Yeah. See what yeah. I mean? You're yeah. like, it's a... Up and hat. Yeah. Dude, why would I care? Yeah. No. So I think I think the whole goal is. And I don't want to kind of spoil the workshop that we're doing. Um, but the whole goal is everyone has this 80-20 rule. I think that rule is outplayed. I think it's a little old school. I believe in what's called the 10-80-10 principle, where 10% of your people, you don't have to ever, ever have to talk to them. Like they'll just go. They're top performers. Their will to win is like super super high. They, they're in it for the impact and the money. Then you have your 80%, and that 80% needs to be, like, that's where the culture comes in. That's where, like, you have to continue to give them praise, give them love, um, create competitions. And then you have your bottom 10%. They're essentially just there to be there, right? And we all have them, and they always take up our time and need money and everything else. But the goal is if you can get more people in the 80% into the 10%, which will become 11 and 12 and 13 and 14 and 15, then you're gonna be able to scale faster and you're gonna be able to bring some of the people from the bottom 10 into the 80 and start moving them that way. And culture happens naturally that way, um, but it starts with you, it starts with your energy right from the start. You never let go of that energy. When you walk into your correlation or your meeting room, if you're not high energy, you need to find somebody that is because you are putting on a performance when you walk in, because you don't know if that person had a bad day, you don't know if their car broke down, you don't know if they're having relationship yeah. problems, you have to get them out of that state, right? You have to get them out of that state and, and excited and intentional with their purpose, and then from there, you can help lead them where you need them to go in order to have a strong culture, which will lead to more sales, and just, just being like the best version of themselves, essentially. Love that. Um, so what other like systems? So you have correlation meetings, yeah. competitions. You yeah. said, is there any other things as a leader that you've implemented that has really created this, this excitement, this retention, this yeah. like, you know, I feel like sometimes you're like, I'm so sick of beating the same drum. Yeah. I go out every yeah. day. I knock yeah. doors. I come home. Yeah. Make money. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, how do you? Yeah. So so I believe in building is energizing and maintaining is is draining. Okay. Right. So you like you have to your leaders have to continue to build their business. But one thing I've been doing, uh, shout out to Paul Rundle, is I've been doing um, with him one like every day, every week. We're having one on one meetings with the managers, figuring out what they need. How can we help them do their job better instead of assuming and then teaching them the how to instead of just telling them? Because for a lot of years, yeah. I just told them, like, dude, what are you doing? Right? You don't know what you're doing? Come on, man. And so now we're actually getting feedback what we need. And so that manager now is going to feel safe and they're going to end up wanting to lead their team better. And it just, it just, uh, it's just like a snowball effect down to that very last rep. Um, but it's just really important. You need, to, you need to have a statement of clarity on your culture and your 10, 10% that's eventually going to get to 12 to 15%. You need to make sure that they hold the line on that culture. Love that. So describe that. Hold the line on the culture. What does that mean? Yeah, it means we don't complain, right? We don't whine. It's never the area, right? It, we, it's the 100-0 principle. So what that means, I'm giving you all the nuggets right now. Yeah, no, right? that's what I'm saying. 100-0, so, yeah. baby. Yeah, 100-0. So 100%, um, take 100% responsibility in your actions or lack of action right, or your lack of results. And there is a 0% on why you should not leave that person that you talk to, whether it's an employee, whether it's a homeowner, whether it's the person at the grocery store, 0% um, why you should ever be negative or mean to them. Yeah. So I believe you take 100% responsibility in your actions and you live to a principle where you're super nice, um, 
the like the law, the universe, whatever you believe in, is it, it's it's gonna be easier to do your job. Yeah, yeah. love that. So let's talk through like sales. So you yeah. still go out. He still produced fifty solar deals this mm-hmm. year. Yeah, you have hundreds and hundreds of salespeople. Yeah, you have more money than you probably know what to do with. Um, He's like, I know I could do something with this yeah. money. No, he makes a lot of money. But, like, what keeps you motivated sometimes when it's just a slow day to just be like, well, I guess I should just go knock today? Like, how do you keep your system's yeah. habits to still throw in 50 yeah. deals, lead from the front? Yeah. What, what helps you there? So it's, it comes down to that, just doing something out of the or like left field and, and winning on it, right? Or, or trying your best. Like, I've conditioned my mind now. Like, I've calloused my mind just like we callous our knuckles or our feet, right? I've callous my mind on a, on a daily basis to, to win. Um, and so I also just want to stay relevant in the space, right? There's a lot of VPs that don't really sell anymore and that's good for them, but it's not good for me because if I ask somebody to do something, I truly believe that I need to do it first. Yeah, because yeah. relev- think about this. Relevancy is key. It's like, I, I, I think the same way. It's like I even had two guys today, two different scenarios where guys were like, I just love the fact that you're still going to knock with companies and you're willing to do the work. And I was like, well, why do I do that? It's because it's relevant. Like, I, I don't want to be like, oh, knock doors. I wear this shirt with pride. And it's like, well, when's the last time you knocked? It's yep. like, no, I, I still can go out. I still got it. Like, yeah. don't, don't sit there and tell me that I'm some dude that just wants to go coach and not yeah. want to do the work. Like, I'm my own grind. Like, last night I was like, dude, I pull out my phone. I was like, look, these last 12 text messages have been me cold calling, me texting out. When are you yeah. going to do this? When are you going to do this? Like, I grind. And I think a lot of leaders feel like the destination is this throne that they get to go sit in tents, yeah. punch some numbers somehow, and still stay yeah. relevant and still stay influential. Yeah. And it's like wait a minute, dude, like your influence all has to do with the impact you're making on your business below you. Yeah. And I think a lot of people forget that. Yeah. If I, you know, I, I try to pride myself on knowing the answer and I'll only know the answer if I continue to sell. Right. Cause I don't want, I don't want the brand new rep to randomly call me and say, how do I do this? And I don't know the answer. Yeah. So what about, okay. So let's talk sales routine. You know, when you were selling, just selling, so yeah. let's say you've got all this managing stuff, you've been doing yeah. sales, yeah. and you were to tell this rep what a perfect top rep's routine looks like, what a, what, a, what when do you start, when do you finish, what's your morning routine, kind of yeah. describe that day. So does the rep have kids or like... <laughs> so. um, let's say yes. Because okay. I think that, I think here's, it's, you know, solar, yeah. like you said, the reason I switched from alarms and summer sales and traveling every summer yeah. was to solar is because you're like, I can't keep yeah. moving family and, you know, yeah. and I think a lot yeah. of people resonate with that yeah. model. Um, so, Nestor, you can just turn that off. You can stop the live, yeah. yeah. Um, or stop. So, yeah, so I guess tell me about what that day looks like. Yeah, so you wake up at 6 a.m. Um, and from, you know, 6 to 7 uh, really, it depends on when your kids wake up. Let's assume they wake up around 7, 7.30. Okay. Um, so you you wake up at 6 a.m., you get your workout in, you get your words of affirmation in, you get your uh, meditation or clearing of the mind in, you get, you get fully prepared to go to battle that day, right? You get fully prepared to go to battle that day, and then you take your kids to school, you give them a kiss, and you tell them they're the most amazing things in the world, and, and we have a motto in the Sullivan family, um, shout out to David Goggins. The motto is stay hard. And I have my seven and five year old saying those things. Five. You have a seven and five year old? Yeah, I, I have a seven and five year old. Yeah, we're like we the same freaking family. Yeah. We're the same so, life, dude. So, um, and then from there, you know, you go and you go, bef- you know, between the hours, I call it like kind of the quiet time between the hours of like nine and 10. Um, you progress your accounts, you follow up with your customers, you ask for referrals, you make sure your business is clean. Is clean. It doesn't matter what industry you're in, you sell clean business, and if you don't sell it at the point of sale, you have to clean it up in the morning. You don't want to clean it up like at 4 o'clock. Okay, and I'm going to put, uh, this is so key. You've set aside an hour in the quiet time to clean up your business. And the reason, so I had a, a rep that I sent out to Legacy on a blitz. And he was just setting, he set for a closer, and the set the closer did like 15 deals for him. Mm. He just, the dude yeah. slid, like both yeah. of them. Yeah. 
So I follow up. I was like, dude, you're finally getting paid probably. This is like super life changing. Congratulations. Never done door to door, right? And he's like, no, dude, I just freaking found out that homeboy, all of the deals but one had bad, like just missing declaration pages, yeah. missing this, yeah. miss- he didn't do this. Yeah. And all 14 canceled except one. Jeez. And I go, but don't call that guy out. <laughs> don't I'm not going to say names, <laughs> but I'm sitting there going, holy crap. I yeah. took a friend of mine that never yeah. knocked doors. His first experience is setting, yeah. knowing he's going to get paid if the deal closes, and 14 of 15 that he was stoked on making more money yeah. than ever. Like, do you think he ever wants to knock doors ever again? Uh, if he, he does, he's going to be really freaking good. <laughs> yeah, like he was like, yeah, he was great. Yeah. And I was just like, yeah. that is such a freaking tire deflation of just like this rep that had no... And I'm looking at the rep. I'm like, dude, that's a lot of money to leave on the table, you idiot. Like, yeah, yeah. But it's just simply because he didn't yeah. clean up his deal. Yeah. So get everything at point of sale. doesn't matter what you sell. Make sure it's clean. Make sure it's funded so it can go to install. Okay. And in, uh, and I don't have over 400 sales. I have over 400 personal installs so because I love just the meticulousness of, of like paperwork and getting it right. Yeah. Like I don't want cancels. So you, you spend that quiet time yeah. in the morning, then what? And so, you know, right around 10, 10, th- uh, 10 to 11, if you have a spouse, you know, 1130, make sure you spend some time with them. It's really crucial. Um, and then by noon, you should be out hustling because someone's always home. Like you should, like, I look at this job kind of like the postman of like, so am I talking about solar? Am I talking solar. about, okay, all right. So I, so I look at my job, I'm the postman slash meter reader. Right, and so my job is, I know my postman. I see him every day in neighborhood. So if you're gonna be the mayor of your neighborhood, right, you need to be out there every single day and you literally need to read people's meters. So you're the postman slash meter reader. So when I don't want to, when it's cold, when it's rainy, um, I don't feel like it, I say, well, what will the postman do today? And he always delivers except Sunday. And so I have that same mentality. Mm, Monday through Saturday, always delivers. I always deliver. I may not get my result. I may blink, but that's okay. I'm back out there next day because I have a job, and it's the read meters, and to be there for the people, to be the mayor of my neighborhood. And the one thing that scares me the most is changing neighborhoods. Yes. Why? Why? This is, this is key because there's so many people that change neighborhoods every other day. Oh, man. That's my pet peeve. Right, because you can't you can't be the mayor, you can't be the president, you can't get mega credibility. You can't walk down the street in a brand new neighborhood and everyone's like, that's the solar guy. Because I want somebody to like when someone else knocks on that door and tries to sell solar, I want them to say, I don't have it, but if I do get it, I'm getting it from Jory. And I'm like, whoa, mm. right? And I want them to call me back. I want to be on the front so of their good. mind. I want them to see my installs. And so why I don't like changing neighborhoods is because I don't know the terrain. Like I'm going in, I'm like a Navy SEAL getting dropped off. And some people might have fun in that, but I have fun in routine, postman. Like yes. I want to know what's going on. I want to be able to beat my chest and say, this is my hood. Get out of here. Imagine doing my job. I have to put a new company shirt, a new product, yeah. Yeah. a new territory, a new yeah. state. Yeah. And just show off for four hours. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, you guys realize if I had it my way? Yeah. This would be month three after me working my neighborhood. And, you you, you know, I'm like, and unfortunately, on a day on site or whatever, I can't show that, like, yeah. cultivated area knocking yep. Yep. versus new turf, new area, new shirts. Yeah. <laughs> it's just yeah. like, ah. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's scary, right? So don't change area. Like, do not change it. Stay put. If you're in solar, try to stay put for at least two months if you can. And I promise you, you'll get way more referrals. You get way more call- callbacks. Um, from it and and callbacks are are gonna happen um, if you if you do your job right I know it's weird to hear but I get callbacks all the time I don't sell them at first right but I get people texting and calling me and saying you know what I think it's time and I probably I probably make an extra hundred grand a year just from following up with people um, and and people calling me back because I said I I brought like to okay so to me, people literally will, this is from Tony Robbins. So people literally will wake up in their box, they'll get in their box, they'll drive to their box, they'll come back in their box, go into their box, and they'll change their state with a cylinder, right? But I choose to change their state when I knock on their door. So if they're a five, 
instead of me being a 10, I try to get them to a seven, right? I try to get their energy to kind of match mine a little bit because no matter if I sell them or not, I want them to remember Jory, the solar guy. There's yes. a lot of bad stuff going on out there in terms of solar and a lot of negative press recently. And so I try to bring them and leave them in a healthy state where they're excited to see me back the next time to go over um, their energy option. Um, or they, they know that I am the guy in the neighborhood and they see me every single day. So when it's time, I've had people literally say, it's time. It's awesome. Right. It's time. They're yeah. like, yep, it's time. And then you're just like, all right, let's write it up. What's yeah. your credit? Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Like the yeah. deal probably goes like Yeah, that I've had some awkward ones where people are just super rude to me and said no. Yeah, and yeah. then I then they call me and I walk back in. I'm like, do you not remember just cussing me off your porch? And like, oh, I was in a bad state. And I'm like, yes. okay, that's fair. Let's get you enrolled. Let's get, let's get five referrals. And so what's interesting, guys, and if you're listening to this, is a lot of times we see every customer that tells us no. We're like, ah, oh, ding, they're, 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 we're a dick, or they told me no, and we write them off. Yeah. Instead of just saying, not the right time and state yeah. for them. Yeah. And it's like, or maybe not the right time and state for me. Yep. Maybe I was going through some emotional, weird yep. dissonance, and I then approached them all grumpy. Yeah. I'm like, hey, you know, I'm out here doing the solar thing. And then they're just like, oh, okay, like, I don't want to buy from you in this moment. Yep. And so, right state, right time. You're going to find that right formula. Yeah. Um, so I like that. Yeah. So what about, so we got to kind of wrap up. I know you got to call and get yeah. on. Um, so before I ask this last question, yeah. we'll finish up with this. One, thank you guys for listening. Yeah, if thank you, guys you guys. Got, if you guys got some value out of this, I hope you guys subscribe. Go follow Jory and give us some love. And go check out his workshop at Door to Door Con. You better go get your tickets. They're selling out quick. Yeah. Um, I think we just passed over 700 tickets. It's so amazing. When, when this launches, yeah. who knows where we'll be at. Yeah. Um, but can I, can I do a, self, a selfless, like, shameless plug here? Yeah, shameless yeah, plug. Yeah, at Jory Won't Lose on Instagram. If you guys want to kind of figure out how I create culture, help create culture, go, go see follow. my story. Yeah, 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 go see my stories. And, uh, and whether you work with me or not, I work for Legacy, um, how they you, implement culture yeah. and how they yep. do it. I show them off in my boot camps. Yeah. So music. like literally, actually, Legacy's in my playbook. Yeah. Like I printed a whole 50-page playbook or something, yeah. and I have screenshots of Instagram of Legacy yep. showing like here's culture. This is what it looks yep. like. This is what they do because it's a copy-paste. It's like R&D. It's like if you're not, you know, you can do your rip-off and duplicate and say, wow, what are they doing different? How are they being intentional? How are they doing it? And, yeah. and how can I replicate better my team, my company, et cetera. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so last question, ready? Yeah. If I was your rep, yeah. this is gonna be a different question. Yeah. I never asked this, right? <laughs> right. Woo, go with me on this. All right. I'm your rep yeah. and I am in a slump. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, I'm burnt out of this whole door to door thing. Mm. I think I just need to go get a stable job. It's like yeah. I'm on the solar coaster of emit commissions. Yeah. And I just don't even like to knock anymore. I don't know. what, what yeah. Dude, I, 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 I just, I'm out. Like, I don't know yeah. what to do. So it depends on how out they are. Are they just talking to look like talk. talk? It's okay. talk to talk right. Right. because you know that they're yeah. not like wanting to leave. Yeah. You just know that they're trying to justify yeah. their suckiness. Yeah. So I'll say this. So first of all, dudes, I'll, I'll, I'm a little different, right? I'll pull them to the side. If it's, in, hopefully it's not in the, like a, like a group setting. Yeah. Hopefully it's one-on-one. -on -one. But, um, you know, this is where I'm going to pull them aside and say, listen, I need you to understand you are an amazing human being and you are here for a reason. You've done hard things and I'll like, it, it's all psychological at that point. And so what I'll do is I will literally just say, repeat after me. Like I'm mm -hmm. amazing. I am, I am the best door to door salesperson in the world. I am great. No one's better. Right. I'll have them pump their chest. Let's go, right? Get them pumped up. And then what I'll do is I feel like this is where a lot of leaders get selfish a little bit is I'll say, dude, do we need to go out and knock right now? Let's go share a deal. Let me go give you a deal. Yeah, Let me get, get you that hit, right? Let me give you that hit so you continue to come back. Um, and I feel like that's one thing I talked about in your uh, workshop when you came to Orlando is, you know, we just have to love people right love them and we can't we got to stop being cheap you got to stop being selfish mine 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 um i believe one of the things that i've done really well is is share margins with others to go grow amazing business and make sure that the the entry level rep 
to the highest level is taken care of, right? Because I know I can always go out and knock doors um, and overrides and things like that are, are cherry on top. Um, and so just don't be like, just go give, right? Don't give, don't give it to them for free. Make them earn it. Sometimes you have to earn it with them, right? Go give them the full rip of that deal. Go get them bought in, right? Give them a hug if they need a hug. And, you know, one of the best things for me is, um, you know, Corey Reed, I remember having a mental breakdown during Hell Week and everyone's selling 15, 16 deals in Pinnacle back in 2009. You're in Pinnacle too, right? No, I was a platinum. Uh, platinum. Okay. And I sold, um, so Corey Reed and, you know, we're doing Hell Week and everyone is selling these lights out numbers, 10, 15, 20 and, and alarms. And I sold three that week. And he brought me in a room and you know, this is vulnerable. I just cried. And I said, I'm not good enough. And all he did was just give me the biggest, deepest hug. And that's all I needed. And literally that next day, I went out and sold two. So I always lead just with love. It's toughness. But when you see an emotional breakdown or somebody doing negative self-talk, you just got to give them a hug sometimes and tell them they're amazing. I want to be very transparent. It's not the area. The hardest area to work is only like five to seven inches. And it's from here to here. Mm. Like that's the hard, you figure this area out, mm -hmm. all the rest of the area is amazing. So good. Right? So that's it. Like you just, you just have to control this. You control this area, the rest will happen because this life is freaking amazing. I love that. So guys, bah, there's so much I want to say just in that. And I, I, got, I, got, I, got, you I got, got, five, go. got five minutes. Okay. Because I, I was just like, oh, Let's keep going. I got five minutes. Okay. Um, so on that, no. you're, I'm going to say a couple of things that just hit me hard was first you were just like change their energy through state like yeah. i think a lot of leaders are afraid to be like let's fire you up and they're yeah. like well i'm an introvert or that's awkward yeah. or that's weird i'm like no whether it's a hug or a pump up or you're getting them to do something is they've just been never reprogramming their story yeah. and you've got to rewind that be yep. like, okay let's go absolutely and i love dude i love you getting vulnerable and raw with this because it's it's sometimes hard to see people like jory or myself that are always out there shining and it's like, guys, there's days where we go back to our rooms and want to cry. Like, yep. there's weeks that you've sold three and you're just like, everyone else is selling so much. Yep. What's wrong with me? Yep. Like, is why this how it ends? Is this, this how yeah, it ends? Like, I, I guess <laughs> I'm just going to be that crappy person that sucks at this. Like, I've had those weeks. And I hope everybody knows, like, yeah. there's been times where, like, babe, I just need a hug. <laughs> like, yeah. And you go home to wife or you go home to manager and you're just like, gosh, like, this is I almost yeah. want to quit. I'm sure there yeah. are days today you're just like I'm throwing in the towel and you're like, I'm just saying that. Yeah. Not really. But no, like, no. Like it's a, it's, a, it. it's, a, it's a long night. Like I went through a long work day and then you text me randomly and I'm like, he's like, let's do it. I'm like, okay, well, I've been working since 9 a.m. It's 6 now. And so now um, I got it. And then I have to, a party with Chris Underwood for, you know, the reality stars that we're going to. And it's like, we're going to be out till 1 a.m. But it's just part of what we're doing. It's part yeah, of we're job. changing the world. And so... What we're doing is, guys, if you see it as an abundance, and this is where I was going with the third thing was, he said, I share margin, I go give them the deal. I, and it's this element of like pure, just I'm giving. And I know that through this whole law of reciprocation and retention is we sometimes step over dollars to pick up dimes in this job because we see so short-sighted. It's like, well, dude, suck it up, pull up your pants, it's gonna work out and like figure it out. And you lose that rep three weeks later or something. Yeah. You're like, what you just lost out on is not only him, but all the potential reps he was going to recruit, mm, all yeah. of the you know, change and the impact of him leaving, then everybody's second guessing. They're like, well, why did Tommy leave? I mean, he was a pretty good dude. Yeah. Like, and then you know, the ripple effect of the yeah. negative that that, yeah. and it's like, you retain that guy, he then shines. What's yeah. the ripple effect in yeah. the other direction? Yeah. And having this abundant mindset, like you said, go give him a deal, go figure it out, like go knock yeah. with him. Well, dude, that means that I can't knock on my own. And it's like, Stop being so short-sighted. Yeah, it's, it's, it's as a leader, if you're listening to this and you're a leader, a lot of times it's not about you, right? It's about them. And, uh, and so you have to be cool and collected and you have to be okay with not always being the front man. Yeah. And that was hard for me to learn for a lot of years, not always being the front man. Um, and so, so by doing that, I feel super comfortable in my own skin and I feel like that's actually elevated my leadership because I don't need to be the man all the time, Yeah. right? I can ride co-pilot. I can even ride in the back if it needs to happen in order for us to win at that moment. Love that. Right? 
Well, you guys heard it firsthand from Jory, guys. This was so good. And uh, I promise DD Cars going to be off the hook. So go get your tickets. Stop sitting on the fence. Um, and uh, yeah, share this. Love it. Much love. Thanks for being on the show, my man. Yeah, man. I hope everyone listening to this, if you're not winning, I hope you're the next Rudy story. Yeah, I love right, that. Man. You're the next Rudy. Yeah, Rudy, be the next Rudy. Rudy. I was a Rudy, <laughs> right? I was terrible. I will absolutely continue to say it. I'm not amazing yet, but I'm on my way to being who I truly am. Love that. Yeah. Okay, thanks, guys. We out of here. See you guys.